Fentanyl fam, my name is Brendan Myers and welcome to uh, How to Count Your Macros. What we're gonna be doing today is going through everything. How I count my macros and how easy it is for me and how efficient you can make it for yourself. So without further ado, let's jump in. started with counting macros and understanding it the create you greens have officially launched link is in the description there are four different influencers that are representing this and there's only 2500 bottles so hurry up they're gonna sell out pretty quickly we formulated this over eight months i'm super super excited for them and if you're too late go ahead and pre-order the next batch because the next batch we're gonna have 15 influencers and they're gonna be selling out like wildfire i really appreciate your support now counting macros First of all, if you're not drinking a gallon to a gallon and a half every single day, you're making a lot of mistakes, I promise you. Your body's made up of fluids, of a lot of water. If you don't have any oxygen in your body, what happens? Water carries oxygen to your muscles. If you want pr proper progression and you want your performance to exceed anything you've ever imagined, drink enough water. Dehydration is extremely significant. It can cause a lot of issues and you do not want those issues. I'm not gonna go into all of that. I just wanted to let you know, gallon to a gallon and a half. Now, macronutrients. So right now what, what I'm gonna be doing is cooking some cod. I have some asparagus. This is, this is from Icon Meals, but I have asparagus, a bunch of asparagus, and then I have shrimp from Icon Meals. But also in here, I, on my air fryer, and by the way, if you have not gotten an air fryer, I highly suggest you do. One of the best ways to cook things without having to really cook them. <laughs> I mean, this is the truth. The best, most powerful thing out there and very, very fresh. So I have zucchini and there are also tomatoes. Okay, now before I jump into like weighing everything and explaining what scale you should get and everything, what are macronutrients? Well, I think you, you pretty much know what they are. They're carbs, proteins, and fats, right? I'm not gonna get into the micronutrients. They're extremely, extremely important. You want a vast amount of vegetables. Not, I'm not actually, you know what? I'm not even gonna get into that. I was gonna say oxidative and like all these different types of things. Doesn't even matter. Get enough micronutrients into your diet. Many of us don't even have any vegetables in our diet and it, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty sucky. That's why the greens juice is here, right? But with macronutrients, there's two things that, that people miss out on that really attribute to the success and the performance of our bodies and how we feel day to day. And that's sodium and it's also fiber. Now fiber, I'm not gonna go into explaining the, the, the different kinds of fiber and how, how it digests or anything like that. All I'm gonna say is, you generally wanna have about 25 grams, if you're 2,000 calories a day, 25 grams as a male. You want a little bit more. It, it's okay to get a little bit more. It's completely fine. If you're at 3,000 calories, go ahead and get 30, 35, 40 grams of fiber. It's very, very important, essential to your digestive system. Now remember, your gut really is like your brain of your body. It, it, it is similar to that. So if your body is always under stress, you might wanna look at your gut. You might wanna look at your sleeping. And actually, your gut can affect your sleeping. Your gut can affect how you're training. Your gut can affect everything. So basically what fiber does is you eat it and it, clears you out it goes straight through it hardens and it goes all the way through your digestive tract and you shit it out and if you're having good shits your fiber is most likely right where it's supposed to be now sodium sodium really regulates the fluids in your body so if you don't have enough sodium you may be feeling fatigued you might not be as strong a lot of this comes down to the water that's provided to your muscles the water that's provided to your cells the fluids that are every like you need enough sodium in your diet it's just like salt right not table salt there's a lot of shit that's not good with table salt sea salt and himalayan pink salt i highly highly suggest now generally you don't want too much salt because it puts more stress on your heart. Imagine if your fluids, if you have too much fluid being held in certain areas of your body or in your body, that's not good on your heart, it works harder. That's why they said that your cholesterol adjusts because of it and all these different things, okay? So be very, very specific with how much sodium you're intaking. Generally, I wanna have about 1,500 to 1,800 milligrams per day, and sometimes I exceed that. You don't wanna go above 2,500 a day. You definitely don't want to, and that's, a, that's an everyday thing. So be consistent, be very, very dedicated to that craft. Okay, so sodium and fiber out of the way. Now, let's get into macronutrients. So to count your macros, how do we do this effectively and efficiently? Now I wanna remind you, I never counted my macros up until about 
four or five months ago. And through that time, I've been able to experience it from a different point of view. I'm not just a regular bodybuilder. I do have a show October 5th, but I'm not just like a bodybuilder and that's what I did. I played college football. I ate like shit. I had fun. I went out and I ate this. I, I never was training for the performance like to see my body look a certain way, right? But if you want to get to a specific body composition, meaning your body fat percentage, whatever it is, you got to look at your macronutrients and also it could be affecting your hormones and your gut health. Just a quick like tad bit. Generally, you can have your carbohydrates around 55%, 50, 55%, and then you split the, the protein down. So 55 plus 30, 85, 75, 85, 85, and then you have 15 fat. You want uh, 20 fat, 30 protein. Uh, you can always shift it around. Uh, 50 carbs, it all depends on what you want. So, general rule of thumb, look at it as like 50%, 30%, and 20%. You can look at it like that. It's a, it's a good number to go off of and just base off of. Now you also need to understand how to get your, your maintenance weight. Like how much weight do I, like how many calories do I need to consume every single day in order to hit uh, like a maintenance, to make sure that I'm not gaining weight or losing weight. Because it all does come down to surplus or deficit of your caloric intake. And that means everything you're, that you're consuming then also what you're producing as you're walking throughout the whole day and the energy expenditure throughout the entire day. That, that's very important as well. So if you wanna lose some fat, go ahead and walk like 10,000 steps, 15,000 steps every single day. It will actually benefit you much more because you're moving more, more energy. What happens when you burn more energy? It doesn't matter like how much you're eating. Well, it does, uh, of course. But whatever you're eating, let's say you're at 2,500 calories every single day or 3,000 calories every day and you're walking 10,000 steps, you're gonna burn a little bit more than if you're just walking 3,000 steps. 7,000 steps more of work. So that work is going to contribute to you losing some weight and most likely fat, metabolism. I'm not gonna get into that. Now, macros, with those macros, let's say I have for me right now, because I'm competing, do not go off of this. Do not base anything off of this. Because I am competing, I am 70 days out, or 70, yes, yeah, 70 days out, and I'm on a low carb day, okay? So I have 180 carbs. I weigh 194 pounds. I'm at 180 carbs. I'm at 85 grams of fat, and then I'm at 220 grams of protein. A lot, right? A lot. So first off, this is what I'm gonna tell you, and I suggest, you take a digestive enzyme. I highly, highly suggest you take a digestive enzyme. Create your nutrition, we're gonna be coming out with some as well. But first, this is who I take, Digest Gold AT Pro. Okay, so digestive enzymes. Basically what it does is it, it just paves the way for the food and everything to be able to digest properly and efficiently. You don't want it to be all like combusted up in there and taking a little bit longer or anything like that. It puts a lot more strain on your body, so digestive enzyme. And I do that before every single meal, every big meal especially. And in the, before I train, I take one or two with my meal. Very, I'm telling you, it, it's incredible. You want, you're not gonna be farting anymore, you're gonna feel so much better. Now, when I count my macros, the way I count them, um, I use two different scales. So we got the AccuWeight, the A-C-C-U weight, W-E-I-G-H-T. I'm not a fan of this, Taylor behind the camera is. I, I generally don't like it. What I do like about it though, is you have fluid ounces, you have the milliliters, you have ounces, you have grams, you have all those, which makes it pretty efficient, right? You have, if you need milliliters, whatever, perfect. This other one, the my weight KD8000, is way more accurate in two like, the, like couple points, right? So this has grams, it has kilograms, it has ounces, it has pounds and ounces, and then it has pounds, and that's pretty much it. So it doesn't have milliliters, and that's what kind of is like, ah, eh, shit. But it's all good, because I generally use this one, whatever I need milliliters, I use this one. If I travel, I'm gonna use this one. So I'm gonna be going somewhere next week, I'm gonna bring in this in my suitcase. Now the way you do this, let's say you're cooking up your cod, okay? Generally when you have 12 ounces of cod, it's gonna turn into, I think like eight ounces, or nine ounces potentially because of the water that it holds when you're baking it. So when you just put it on, it, it's very, very simple. I would not weigh your food before. I wouldn't weigh it before, definitely not. And also, depending on the seasonings that you're putting on or the sauces, you wanna actually weigh out your sauce first. 
So you cook your food, but before you cook your food, you go and weigh out the sauce on the scale, then you put the sauce on here, then you weigh it after and you subtract the sauce from the entire tray, okay? So again, you're gonna take this cup, okay? You're gonna put it on a plate. Then you're gonna take a little cup and you're gonna put sauce in it and you're gonna put it on top, the milliliters or whatever ounces, whatever the hell it is. Then you're gonna weigh it, boom, you got your weight. Now you weigh this, you weigh the actual pan and the aluminum, okay? Because you don't want any fish on there because you gotta understand how much the sauce and, and this weighs before the fish, right? So then you, you simply, this, it, it's actually a pretty simple process. You simply weigh this and this, you get whatever it is. Let's say it's 40, whatever, 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever it is, whatever the grams are. You bring the fish, you put it on top. You already know how much this weighs, you already know how much the sauce weighs. You put the sauce on top, you bake it, you put it on top of here, you take the total weight and you minus it by what the tray weighed and what the sauce weighed. Simple as that, okay? So that's one way, whenever you're baking, right? Now, simple way of, of just weighing all this stuff. Generally, I put the plate on here first and I hit tear, T-A-R-E, or tar, tear, whatever. This zeroes it out, zeroes the plate out. So this is a zero to the scale. And all you do, and I'm actually eating right now, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this asparagus and I'm gonna weigh it out and making sure there's not much water on it because that makes a huge deal. And I have about 172 grams of asparagus, okay? I'm telling you, this is a very simple process if you're doing it right. So let me grab my phone. I go to my fitness pal. Definitely, definitely just go to my fitness pal. One of the easiest ways to do it. You go in there, you put in asparagus, 172, and then I'll show you uh, what it looks like here. So right here. 172 grams of asparagus, boom. That's six grams of carbs. I go over here. I'm like, all right, I got my scram. And you can do two different things. You can do two, two different things. You can weigh out your, you can see how many carbs, fats, and proteins you want before your meal. Or if it's in the middle of the day, I generally just go ahead and I throw it on there and then I weigh it. Because I know that I have a lot more carbs, fats, and proteins to consume. And I'm not too worried about it. So I'm gonna grab this shrimp and I'm gonna show you another way that you can do this as well. I'm gonna grab this shrimp. And actually, you know what, I'll show you right now. Instead of having the, the plate on there with the food already, because I already have that weighed, it's cool. Put this on here, okay? Everything's on here. 315 grams, right? Obviously, I'm not gonna eat 315 grams of shrimp or 11.1 ounces of shrimp because this also is weighed in there. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit the, the reset so it's zeroed out. This is zeroed out and all I'm gonna do is add shrimp to my plate. That's all you do. Add shrimp to my plate, make sure the liquid's out. I don't want any liquid, because that's gonna weigh something. Okay, so let's just say I'm only having five shrimp. You see this? Now it's in the negative, 1.80 ounces. So you can see, you can do it both ways. You can have the food already made, and you put it here, and then you're just removing it each time. The only reason why you can't do that with the cod and the sauce is because the sauce also weighs something, right? So it's a different color, like a, a, a whole facts, nutritional facts, than the actual cut itself. So I take, the, I, I take the shrimp and boom, I put it on there, I know exactly how much it is. Now, the other thing is, like you can use something like this. You can put anything on this thing and plop it on and then remove it and put it on there and then you can see exactly how many calories or, or macros there are there, okay? So that's just a couple of ways that you could be doing it. Now I will say this, I'm not big on, like I usually get my, my calories, right? And I say, all right, this, this is how many calories I need to kind of consume, but I focus more on my macros. I get my macros, I know my macros for, that, for the calorie range that I'm looking for. And then that's what I focus on when I, when I grab any packages of any food, right? Because a lot of the times, like you'll add up the calories and it doesn't match the protein, the carbs, and the fats. And it's because some of these uh, boxes, they contribute the fiber into it. And they also contribute sugars into it. I, I don't know why, like for me personally, I, I don't understand that part of it. I'd rather it just be like my proteins, my carbs, and my fats. But it's the food industry, what the hell? Nothing's simple. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And this is a very, very easy way to to really get everything that you need and understand it quickly enough. I'll give you another example. So, let's say you have a bottle, 
right? You take the cap off, obviously. Oh shit, it smells so good. I put it on here and then I click that button. See how it's reading right now? It's reading it so I can get to the zero ounces, boom. Then when I pull stuff out, it simply says the negative. And that's how I know how much I'm taking and I'm putting on my bread. So you have your two uh, slices of bread, great. You don't need to weigh that out because it's already like nutritional facts are pretty accurate. And then you take that, you put it on top and you know exactly how much is in that meal. And that's pretty much it. That's how you count your macros. At first you're gonna be like, oh, this is a pain in the ass, blah, blah, blah. But like, it really isn't. It, it really is pretty simple. When you eat, you throw something on there and then you actually become intuitive. You're like, okay, this much rice or this much carrots or this much chicken or turkey is six ounces or eight ounces. Six ounces of ground bison is actually a good amount, right? It's like a little bit more than this. But when it's eight ounces, it's like out here. And I kind of know and I'm like, all right, if I, was, if I wasn't prepping for a show, I would just do that. That's how I'd count my macros. I'd be like, okay, I've done this for long enough. I know that that's, a, that's like six to eight ounces of bison. So that's pretty much it. Very, very simple. You're able to bake now. You're able to do whatever you want. Uh, even, even on a pan, put a pan on this bad boy. It's a little bit more expensive, but you put a pan on there, even if it's hot, it's okay. Uh, viewer discretion is advised if anything happens and I put the pan on there in one of my videos and it blows up. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I am not your doctor that I, I did not tell you to do that. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, so put it on top and yeah, you basically take the fish off or the chicken and you take it out of the pan or you want to add some sauce to it. Let's say the cod, because the cod's here. Let's say you cook it on the pan, boom, it's done. Or it's halfway done or whatever it is. And you say, you know what, that's pretty good. That's good enough. I know that it will be like a little bit less, uh, of my macros will be a little bit less once it's done, but I'm gonna put it on here. Then I put the sauce on top, boom, I see how much sauce is on there. I can easily, easily put that into my, my fitness pal and then I put it on top and I cook the rest. Like it really is that simple. So if you have any questions about this, go ahead and comment down below. I'm sure there's some nutritionists that follow me <laughs> that are like, the, you know, the keyboard warriors are like, I'm a nutritionist. I know everything about protein. Protein's good. You need 400 grams every day. You know, like guys, allow the nutritionist to, to do the, the nutrition shit and let, let yourself do your own shit, whatever that is. So comment down below if you have any questions. Um, I'll try and get back to really, really busy right now, but super, super excited to release this video. I'm so happy that you, you made it all the way through. And remember, create your nutrition link in the description, greens juice. It's, it's a badass, it's a badass product. Pro, prebiotics, probiotics, three different types of mushrooms. We have fruits, vegetables, things like spirulina, ashwagandha, we have cinnamon, we have uh, like organic banana, like all these different things that are in there. Uh, and, and we wanted to just come out with a bang. We wanted to start, it's gonna be a big, it's gonna be a big company. It's gonna be a big brand and people will really value it because we listen to you. And also shipping, $2 domestic and $7 international. So if you are international, don't even worry about it. We're gonna ship to you all around the world. No problem, absolutely. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Also podcast every Tuesday and Friday. Super excited to keep on going with that. And if you have any questions, again, comment down below. Send me a message on Instagram if you watch this video at the B Myers. I'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.